Oh, hello there. This is Cool Dude Clem, or at least um, a lot of stuff on Cool Dude Clem's bench. Now, as some of you probably know, I'm going to be doing very shortly, maybe in a few days or so, going to see if I can make a super hit radio. And well, I thought I'd do a few experiments and see if I can come up with anything of interest right now. So we'll see what we got here. Stuff, stuff, and more stuff. So I've got this little radio modulator circuit here, this little AM modulator circuit, which is going to stand in for our radio station. That way I can use my own music without getting into any copyright issues. So that's the radio station, and down here, let me just move the camera over a little bit, is the receiver circuits. Now it's a very, very simple, very basic receiver circuit. It's basically like the bare bones of a super hit radio. I've got a oscillator here, which is a square wave oscillator, and I know that you should be using a sine wave oscillator and a square wave oscillator is possibly the worst kind of oscillator you could use, but for this experiment it'll be good enough. And I've got a little IF cam, I believe that's a 455 kilohertz first IF stage cam because it's got the yellow um, screw thing on it. So I've got this oscillator connected to this IF cam through this 22 picofarad capacitor and also connected directly up to this the AM modulator and connected to the other side of this can I've got a germanium diode and a 100k resistor and that's going to the microphone input of my amplifier or rather it's going into the microphone input of my tape deck and that's going to my amplifier but you get the general idea so my theory is that by adjusting the frequency of the local oscillator we should be able to tune in to this even though there's no tuning coil or anything like that oh and uh, this is what happens when you don't pay attention to what you're doing and your antenna which isn't connected to anything right now falls down and shorts out both terminals of the battery That really had a go at it. Luckily nothing leaked out of it and it didn't explode, so we're okay. Okay, we're ready to try this. Now I've got no idea if this is going to work. Probably won't, knowing my luck, but let's see. I'm going to plug the oscillator into my power supply. So, there we go. I was doing something. Actually, I can very faintly hear the music coming out already, which is kind of strange. Maybe we're right near the frequency we need to be at. So I'm going to adjust this and see what happens. See if it gets louder at any point. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, look at that. It actually works! My theory worked! Still can hear it very slightly when I'm not in tune, but... It comes in really nice and strong when I get the frequency just right. Sound quality is not the best, but I'm not really bothered about that at the moment. Alright, let's just do a little adjustment to this. Get that nice and loud. So when I disconnect the oscillator from my power supply, we should not hear any more music. Ah, yeah. 
music's gone. I'm going to plug it back in. I think the frequency might have drifted a little. Oh, the song's ended. That's why I've got so faint. But yeah, didn't think that would actually work. It was just a little theory I had that I thought I might try out and see if it actually does anything, and well, it does. I'm quite surprised by that, actually. And for the inner nerd in all of us, there is a schematic of how the circuit is laid out. There's the IF can. And there's the capacitor responsible for mixing this and this together. Not sure what diode I used because it was just out of a out of one of those scrap PCBs I have. So uh, I'm just going to say it's an OA91. I'm not going to say that's exactly what it is, but yeah, that diode would work if you used it. And pretty much everything in this dotted line is the radio circuit or the radio tuner or whatever you want to call it. And yes, I know some of you will want to see the schematic of the oscillator, so I'm not going to keep you waiting. There it is. That's the oscillator circuit. I didn't really have much time to draw that. You can see it better now. Okay, so now I'm going to try to explain how the superhead system works, even though I don't have a full understanding of it myself, but this is how I think it works. So, up here, let's say this is the whole AM frequency band. So we've got 550 kilohertz down here and 1.6 megahertz up here and all these little pyramid-shaped things where the stations are. So in a superhet radio, we have a high-frequency oscillator that mixes in with what's coming in off the antenna coil. And when you do that, you get like a copy of each radio station but at a higher frequency or a lower frequency than what it would normally be so with the oscillator on the stations could appear say around here they could appear around here or uh, somewhere in the middle and as you turn the frequency up and down it's gonna change the frequency that these copies of the stations appear on so uh, eventually one of them is gonna land on the 455 kilohertz, which is what gets demodulated, and that's what you hear. It's something like that. Anyway, that's it for me, and um, I'm just going to edit this and upload it, and yeah, I guess in the next video I'll be doing some more whatever. So until next time, goodbye.